back. I mean, these streets in Kentucky is so rough. Tell and I beer. got shoes on my feet. Come on. And I stay on B. Welcome to Kentucky. This is a piece uh, that was inspired from the film uh, Boys in the Hood by Michael, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John Singleton. And uh, this is a pretty iconic piece. Everyone uh, typically notices this, where uh, Ricky got shot in his back walking in the alley right. with uh, Cuba. Um, I always liked it. It was a pretty powerful image, you know, the dude hanging out the window with the shotgun. But a lot of people don't realize the actual story behind the actor who portrayed him. And it was, uh, was it uh, Avery, uh, Lloyd Avery the yeah. Third, And uh, he had like a budding acting career. I think that was his first film. And life began to imitate art, and he eventually ended up going to prison in California, um, where he was satanically, ritualistically murdered by his cellmate and cannibalized. So it, it, it escalated real quick, All right. his death did. And uh, it was a pretty eerie situation behind that story. But uh, yeah, it's just an iconic piece, man. It's just like, it captured early 90s California culture, you know, with the locomotion. And, and the, the type of vehicle they were driving in, you know, they were bloods, he's got a shotgun, you know. Um, the song that was playing when they rode up and shot Ricky was Ice Cube's Bird in Hand. So that's not what I named the piece, was Bird in Hand. And uh, I don't know, I like it. It was an idea that I had thought of for a while and then just executed it. But I probably had it in mind to paint it for like five years before I painted it. Yeah, that uh, Lord Avery story is crazy, man. When you get into it, yeah. how he uh, he was just a regular guy, and and after the movie, he kind of really became a blood and and, and got into that life. It's right. like, well, most people do the opposite, where they might have a rough life, and there's a silver lining, and they okay, I got an acting career. He had a nice career, could have took it either direction, but kind of went backwards. Right, and. Ended up going from acting in a critically acclaimed movie, a cult, cult following, uh, to going to be uh, eaten by his prison mate. <laughs> man. All right. I'm just following you through. Uh, what right. you got here? All right. Yeah, this is uh, from a film, um, Shawshank Redemption. It's one of my favorites. Right. Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. Uh, it's a pretty cool piece. It's another movie that I like. I think when I painted this, the watercolor... It really matched up with the brick, how the brick was in the photo, and how it is in the film. It was my favorite part. It's like it's kind of abstract, but it still kind of brings through uh, the belief that there's actual brick behind these people. I did a convention with um, Patrick. Uh, what's the T one thousand from Terminator Two? Uh, You'd have to ask him. He... Patrick Dempsey? No, 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 Patrick, no, no, uh, Patrick. Uh, he played uh, in uh, John Cena's Peacemaker. He played the anti, uh, the white supremacist. Uh, I always forget his name. But I, I met him at a convention. He's a cool-ass dude. But he had told me that how much of a cool-ass dude Morgan Freeman was. He had worked on a film with him. He was like, oh, Morgan, he's a really good guy, man. Just like a genuinely good guy. So that was a pretty cool piece. He had came by my booth and saw a print of that. Yeah, that one's uh, one of my favorites. I like it. Yeah, I gotta get get it framed soon. This is a piece from the film Akira. I, I'd scour the internet to try to find um, giant printouts or posters or canvas, and it's extremely hard come to find out to find any type of really large canvas to get mailed or to even purchase. So uh, I decided just to buy some canvas myself and paint the art on it myself to hang it up because I wanted a really big piece of. Uh, Tetsuo and Kanade from the manga. So I did it. Yeah, hung it up. And it's pretty cool. I get to wake up and I'm half asleep and I look at that. It makes me pretty happy. <laughs> and uh, over here, there's more uh, more prints and pictures I bought from different artists and different conventions. I got stuff everywhere. I mean, I got. Autographed pieces from Sam De La Rosa, who uh, he did Venom for many years for Marvel. Uh, if you go in here, actually, this right here is a, another piece I got framed from a place I used to work at. 
This is uh, an artist named Serpieri, he's an Italian artist. He's probably about 82 right now, but he was really uh, famous in a heavy metal magazine in the early 80s and throughout the 90s. And I uh, learned a lot of, from his art, like his watercolor technique. You know, a really uh, great Italian artist, really good anatomy and colors. And here, uh, this is another Princess Mononoke piece I like a lot. When you when you see something that you like and you go to purchase it, what is it about some a piece of art that you want to uh, makes you want to spend your money on? Okay, well this one in particular is from a, an anime uh, Princess Mononoke, but um, the way he did it was like a real life rendition of what the person would look like, you know, in our reality. And I don't know if it's, it's eye capturing, and uh, it's just a really gorgeous piece. It's, if it stands out, I like it. Um, this is from another, um, one of my favorite artists, this is Yoshitaka Amano. He's a Japanese artist, probably the world's most foremost uh, fantasy artist. And he's worked on everything from um, Final Fantasy, I think, Gachaman. Um, I got this, it was a sign by Bruce Campbell. Um, it's one of the scare fests here in Lexington. And he autographed the watercolor. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Evil Dead, Bruce Campbell? Mm-hmm. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, this right here was a piece I did for a salt and pepper. And they actually hung this up. You can come up and get a shot. They had hung this up in the green room. But I forgot at the time that these two didn't like her. Right? right. They had fallen out. I forgot about that. So it made its way to the green room. And uh, one of their backup dancers even like shattered them out. was like, because I had tagged their name in it. And he's like, oh, yo, check this out. And they gave no response. And I'm pretty sure it's because they didn't, they wouldn't get down with her, right? Right. And then maybe three months later, I think they had a Hollywood Walk of Fame and they was all together. And they was like, oh, yeah, we could. I'm like, y'all you know, <laughs> could have had this little money powwow get together. Right. You know, they shouted me out or something. Yeah, Spinderella got, she, she felt she got left out of the group. Mm-hmm. But, uh. I don't know, it made it to the green room and they saw it, so I, I don't know, I guess that was cool. It was cool for them to allow me to do that. Right. I got a pair of these two. I came out with my own shoe like three or four years ago. How did you come up? How, what was the idea behind it? How did you? I don't know, it's like a live shoe. So, I mean, if you, if you come up with the design and you sell enough of them, they, they go into manufacturing. Right. And, uh, Pretty cool. Put like the art, my artwork in the tone right there. Uh, they're pretty slick. I sold like maybe 20 pair. Manufactured in Bergamo, Italy. They uh, retail for 220. Yeah, I'm dope. I like it. You know, like I said, box. Mr. Bird's Bird song is a bird trying to all around Renaissance man, entrepreneur. We're here on Hill Horses Radio, Kentucky News Bullshit and Politics. And today we have artist extraordinaire, all around man of the town, Mr. Pierce Birdsong. Mr. Birdsong, welcome to Hill Horses Radio. Oh, thank you, thanks for having me. And the reason I wanted to get you on the show is because he does a lot in the community for the art community. And he's one of those guys, you see him everywhere that you see art, uh, whether it be the Comic Con Fest, uh, at your local uh, festival. He's always somewhere there promoting the local community. So, Mr. Birdsong, we'll jump right in. As far as art, how long have you been, has your heart been into art? Uh, since I was a child, you know, uh, late 80s, been really young, been like drawing on the wall, crayons, yes. getting whooped for it. What was the first thing you were proud of? It was um, a picture of Goofy that I inked. I, my father was locked up and I sent it to him and I thought I did a really good job on it and I was like, oh man, I'm good at this. Yeah. Uh, now as far as something like that, tell, tell us about your childhood and, and growing up without a father and how that, or did that influence your heart? Um, I'd say it influenced it because when we would correspond, 
he would typically get like a prison artist to always draw Mickey Mouse as some cartoon character on the envelope. And I would see that and I would get pretty inspired. I'm like, oh, these guys are in prison doing really good art. Um, and that helped out a lot. I'm like, okay, cool. He's, there's other artists, you know, no matter if they're locked up or not locked up. I thought it was just cool that. So it kind of, art kind of built the bridge uh, between you and your father. Um, I wouldn't say it was directly like it, didn't, it had anything really to do on our relationship. It was just that I was thought that was awesome that these guys were doing really cool art. Um, now, nah, other than that, I don't think it really had any influence on me doing art. My mother's the one that actually had the artistic okay. ability. She she was the one that actually can draw. But other than that, it was just. I don't think neither one of my parents. I, I would say um, when I when I was a child and I would draw on the wall, she would scold me for it and beat me for it, and he would be the one that would just be kind of passive about it and laugh. So uh, maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> but I mean, she she knew where you got it from. She she probably did the same thing when she was young. Uh, you know who knows. Um, like I said, she surprised me one day when she drew like a, it was a character from. A, Nickelodeon's all real monsters. And she just never draws. Mm -hmm. You can draw that well, yeah. I just don't draw. So yeah, that was pretty funny. When did you realize you could make a living? I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have not realized that I could make a living off of art. And some people, you know, it's weird. Some people are able to do that. I mean, I, I've, I have made a living off of it. Um, it wasn't more so long term. It's, it's like I had a two or three year span where I was making decent money doing like a lot of large scale murals and stuff and it really slowed down after COVID. Um, I still like, you know, I work for a, a comic company called uh, 5050 Comics based out of Houston, Texas. One, one of the owners lives in Houston. The other owner lives in Cleveland, Ohio. And, um, you know, I, I'll do an issue, you know, I'll work as an illustrator and a colorist and an inker and I'll get a residual check. I can pay a light bill or I can pay my water bill, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, it's coming from, you know, I used to run in the uh, music industry. So to be able to uh, pay your bills off your your blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty cool because a lot a lot a lot, uh, a lot of artists are able to do that you know for any time span. So you know to be able to provide a living doing right. something you love is kind of amazing. That, that's a good feeling, you know. Like you do an art project and you you know taking on three wearing three hats, doing three roles, and then you get a residual check, and then I actually pay the bill. Okay, now the whole goal is to keep the process more right. fluid and rapid and actually get more money to where I don't have to go wake up and clock in at, you know, a job, yeah. you know, so. You know, it's it's kind of all of our, you know, our goals is to yeah. provide a life for ourselves doing something we love. Right. And that's why I started my own separate business, you know, I started a caricature, it's primarily a caricature business, but I'll do like other out, art outlets, uh, it's called Bird Draws Inc. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm doing caricature art, so. People have like wedding receptions or birthday parties. Tell us a little bit all that you do, because uh, I know it's kind of hard for us to to get into all of it. But tell us some of the high points that you're, you're proud of. Uh, I've been working as a personal trainer off and on for the past five or six years, uh, working in different locations. That's been pretty cool. Uh, I tutored art. You know, I had a few art students. Um, I've had a few martial arts students also. Uh, a kid, Max, he, he did really well. It was his first time doing anything physical. I think I might have seen that on his yeah. And uh, I mean, he went to the Bluegrass State Games and won a bronze medal in his first outing. Granted, I don't know, maybe every kid who participated won a medal. I think he actually it, it, you know, I think he kinda, placed third, though. You know, he's kind of selling himself short. Uh, he just showed us a pair of shoes that he designed, which you'll see later at some point. Uh, they are pretty dope. Tell us about how you came up with the uh, idea for shoes. No, it was just like an, a live shoes. I mean, anybody can do it if you have the capital and you actually sell enough shoes. Right. Uh, it's just that I came up with a design and enough people liked the design and they bought enough to where the shoes actually went into the manufacturing stage, yes. you know. And uh, I just came up with colors that I like and uh, I actually put my own watercolor art in the tag and the tongue of the shoe to make it a bit different. But they basically have stock standard designs. It's just that if enough people like your design and you can sell it, it goes into the stage. Not everybody makes it to the stage. So that's how they came about. Tell us some about some of the uh, 
Comic Con festivals. Tell us because we want people to get to know you and your crowd, your audience. What is one thing that people will learn by going and, and seeing those 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 festivals? I mean, if you're just a fan of like a, you know either a paranormal scare like scare fest type of comic uh, convention or just like a regular Comic Con. Um, you get to meet different actors and artists that you might have grown up liking or you know if you're a collector like you know you see all the different photos and pictures I have here I've collected um, if you just like want a social gathering it's really cool to meet people in movies that you've grown up watching and like oh yeah I get that when I was eight years of age I was watching this movie and I get to meet this guy I mean, he's like 80 he's almost dead <laughs> you know like Kevin Conroy he just passed the voice of Batman he died and uh, I would see him in multiple conventions and never met him before. Same thing with uh, was, uh, John, uh, the Green Ranger, he just mm -hmm. passed. I would see him in multiple conventions. I just never actually walked up and met him, you know, but I, at least I've seen him in person, you know. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have walked up and met Kevin Conroy or got an autograph from him. Yeah, you know, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, and as far as art, let's, let's get into what art is to you. What is something that you would tell a young artist that you have learned throughout your troubles of, of trying to make your art well known? Um, I don't know, the first thing that comes to mind is get your money up front and make them sign a contract. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it's, 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 yeah. it sounds basic, but it, it's... Yeah, yeah cause, I mean, unless the person's really, really cool, you know them really well, you ain't got to worry about this shit. It's just that... Hey, look, I, I've gotten into it. And like I was saying earlier, man, everybody wants to like, oh, yeah, man, I, I got this wall I want you to paint. Uh, I want you to paint this truck. Okay, when, where, you know? Right. Oh, yeah, man, you know, I, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. And I'm like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. just I don't need you to pull my chain. And I, I got time, you know, because right. you could be saying this, and I could have somebody who's serious about it. And now I'm like thinking that you got, I got this big project, time. and you're just talking shit. It's like, yeah. you know, so... Uh, I guess just have a very good ground understanding between you and your client. You know, hey, is this set in stone? And that's where you gotta have to sign a contract. Right. You know, you know, it, so it sounds like simple, but it's one thing that will save you a lot of headaches and, and, and probably get you some money. It will. It, it, it gets really. It, it can get annoying working with a, a client, especially a person who thinks that they know what they want, right. and they tell me this idea. I'm like. I mean, I, sometimes I'm just like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> you know, and if this ain't something I'm, I'm jabbing with, I, I find somebody else to do it. You know, I'm, you know, I don't feel comfortable doing this, which is very rare that it happens. I'll paint, you know, just to do just about anything. But um, yeah. Now, one of the things I, I wanted to uh, talk about was you paint things that. You wouldn't see a lot of places like such as this, uh, the Larry Davis, the Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. What draws you to these images that you know some people don't see the same kind of art? Where, where does your eye come from? There's story behind the images. Like I said, with this one, it's like not only is it just the iconic images, images from that movie. Right. The real life actor's story is very traumatic and deep. Right. Larry Davis. A lot of people don't know. He, that's a really, that's a big issue that happened in New York. It was right. a real, you know. Now he was literally on the run. Uh, the police came in and, and tried to kill him. Tried to kill him. Shot his way out. Shot his way out. Uh, ended up getting caught. It's a uh, great story for those who uh, want to find out. It's Larry Davis. Yeah. I was supposed to sell a painting to his daughter. I man kept trying to contact him. I like, will drive him to New Jersey. But yeah. I don't know. It never did come to fruition. But there's a story behind the Shawshank Redemption. There's a very deep story. Uh, like when that movie came out, my grandmother didn't watch it because, you know, she had three sons that, you know, my father, my two uncles, they went to prison. So she was all depressed. I can't watch this movie. Yeah. You know, but there's a lot of like issues that certain stories bring up and invoke within people. Um, and, you know, I, I like drawing, I like making pinup art. You know, I like doing a lot of pinup comic art. I love painting women. Um, Studying anatomy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Now, uh, as far as your art, is there a type of is is there a genre that you would fall into, or is it 
because a lot of a lot of folks don't understand the art world. I'm, me being one of them, you know, we kind of think that artists fall into. We see different kind of groups and, and different kind of names of these groups. Right, right. Uh, is this is there a specific group or a specific art art that you do that your art falls into? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm a comic illustrator. I, I love a lot of comic art, but at the same time, I like fine art. You know, it's like a uh, Bill uh, Sienkiewicz. You know, he, he was a comic artist and he's inking and doing all these other things, but man, he's making all this fine, this mixed media watercolor art. And, um, somebody asked me that the other day, and I have a fine appreciation for Renoir and, you know, Gauguin and, you know, Banksy, all these, you know, different contemporary artists and old school artists and artists of antiquity. I like painting abstract in landscapes, um, cars. Tree, anything. I, I just like all art in general. You know, inks, pencil. I love everything about art. You know, it's just. Yeah, my favorite medium. Um, I guess you could say watercolor or gouache. It's what I use the most because it's very. It's, first of all, it's cheap, and like oils and stuff. Oils can get kind of expensive, and it, it takes a little longer, and it requires more space. And my space is limited. I've been working uh, digitally a lot with the Procreate application. And that helps with space and materials because mm -hmm. materials can get kind of costly. Um, other than that, you know, I really like um, just straight up pen and ink and Copic markers and paint markers and combining colored pencils and paint markers. Uh, tell us uh, 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 about some of the murals you've done. Oh uh, yeah, I have uh, I don't know approximately ten, nine, nine to twelve murals around Lexington. Some are like kind of tucked away. I think the biggest one is uh, down here on uh, Gus's Fried Chicken beside Carson's. I did that in 2019, I believe. It was, it was my biggest one, you know, I had a lift. Right. And it was pretty cool, it was my big, and it was right there, the centerpiece, when you come in there Midland. Yeah. It was a pretty pretty good uh, job for me. So, whenever you see you driving down Midland, check it out. Yeah, there uh, there's uh, another Akira piece behind the Green Lantern Bar, uh, if you're over by, um, Indies yeah. off of Broadway. Right. There's a apartment complex. There's a series of DC characters I did. Uh, I did some Airbnbs. The most notable was a Bob Dylan Airbnb. No. With my friend Heather's. That was a, it. Was really fun. That was like the last big job I had before COVID. Um, big Kahuna Burger. Yeah. There's a Sam Jackson. If you ever go there, it's a Hawaiian restaurant. It's really good. I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, check it out. Check it out there. Um, man. There's different restaurants. There's a lot of food trucks, and I did like maybe three or four food trucks. Really fun, and uh, and I, and when I did the food trucks, that was the most easiest clientele. They was like, "Hey man, look, just paint stuff and have fun." <laughs> I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> they they paid me the money. Right. The money was right. It was on time. They didn't complain. They didn't say, "Hey, you're a king." They said, "Look, you got an idea. I'm gonna trust you." Pow, knocked it out. I was like, "I wish everybody could be like you." Guys. Food truck people are good people. We've interviewed a few more than a few. Food truck people are good people. They are. I mean, like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> they just, they just really easy, right. easy to work with. I'm like, yeah, I got a food truck painted. Bow, cool. And is there anything else that you want folks to know about who you are as an artist, who you are as a person, what you want people to know about your art? Something that is going to live with. I don't know, man. I think hopefully I can relay that message in the books and stuff that I have coming out. I have one book published, one one kid, children's book published. Yeah. It's called Little Bug Race Rat. Yeah. It came out in 2020. Um, I have another one called uh, There Be Monsters coming out. Uh, I also have another collaboration with a friend of mine, Rose Marks, who's a botanist. Okay. And she had took a series of photos of different uh, fauna, of different plant life. And uh, I was going to combine that with uh, a series of watercolor uh, and her photos and just make them. I mean, I, I, I showed you the, I haven't showed you the book, this uh, watercolor book by uh, an artist that combines uh, Taoist philosophy, Eastern philosophy with Western painting techniques. It's called the Tao Watercolor by Jean Carbonetti. And what she does is she takes like a, a watercolor painting and then she will kind of like match it with a, a Taoist mindset or you know, some, some sort of uh, psychological component of bringing Eastern philosophy in the painting. So let's say you have a spirit of mindfulness or deliberateness. So every child is an artist, right? It's not until like somebody critiques them 
that they start to second guess, right. like, oh, you know, you can tell a kid, a child to paint a picture, confidence. right, and, and, and that, you know, can affect them in their adult stages, but if you tell a child to paint a picture of a house or a car or a tree, they just go for it. Right. They don't think about it. They right. are cool. They do it. It's no not, matter how it looks. No matter how it looks. It's like, I'm doing it. You know, it's like you see like a seven-year-old basketball prodigy. He's going between the legs. He's shoot. He has no doubt in his mind. Right. You know, it's this or nothing. I'm, I'm going to achieve this goal. And it's not until we get to a certain age where external factors start to affect our beliefs, right. our limiting beliefs. And then it's like, okay, I can't, I can't, I can't do this right. I can't hold down a job right. or my marriage can't be it's stable. Self-doubt. Self-doubt, yeah. And it's all instilled in your childhood. So, um, you know, I think... So when you have a child that's growing up, they want to experience something, let them experience something. Let them go out and do whatever they want to do because... Within reason, of course. You know, <laughs> within reason, because you never know what your child's going to be talented at. Right. And some of us... I walk around with talents in us that we have no idea that are in us until we get that one chance to uh, show them. So, Mr. Birdsong, I don't want to take too much more of your time. We've been here for a little while now. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope to get the word out about you and, and your abilities and all that you do. Uh, check out the Little Bug Rap. Little, little, little Bug Race Rap. Yeah, the Little Bug Race uh, Rap. Check out 5050 Comics. It's 50 F I F T Y. C O M I X, and uh, we got a series of books: uh, The Nature of uh, Lycos Metal Wolf, Hurricane Ida. Uh, we got a series of books. A really good team: uh, Nisha Mars and uh, Lee Johnson, Leon Saul. So it's a uh, it's a good book. And say he kind of sells himself short. You heard all that we got out of him. You <laughs> know, from shoes to being an author to being a talented muralist being an all-around renaissance man when you think of that word and you think of uh what you would think of a person who you, when you say renaissance a person who could do it all who does it all well and again thank you for taking your time out. Oh, sure and uh it's been hill horses radio kentucky news bullshit and politics we're out